our sound. That's our music. That's terrible. You got to get in the mic. You got to get in the mic. That's our music. That's terrible. I know. I don't know why it's so <laughs> reverby. <laughs> okay. Let's just turn it off, though. Because it's hurting my head. Is that better? No. Andrew Bauman. Hey, Rob. How are you doing today? Well, my head hurts because of the music. <laughs> I mean, it's reverb. Arizona is a wildly beautiful place. Brimming with over 100 brewing companies. I'm Rob Fulmer, the executive director of the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. I'm joined by Deputy Director Andrew Bauman. Together we cover the state. Bringing you the best of what's happening at our breweries and beyond. Welcome to Arizona Beer Frontier. Hey, it's over. So okay, hey everybody. Thanks for coming out to... Uh, Strong Beer Fest yesterday, and we are now at the Super VIP Brunch and Beer Education Fun Times. Hi, yeah. thanks for being here. <laughs> Don't forget to pick up your glassware at the end, okay? We just wanted to say thank you. We've got a special treat. Uh, we're not going to talk so much, and we're going to have uh, Johan from uh, the Phoenix uh, beer, uh, mag Magazine, uh, uh, their beer show. They don't have a, we don't have a tagline for our show, and they don't have a, a name that says beer in it. I don't <laughs> know what to make of that. But um, we wanted to say thank you for coming out. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, it's good to be back. Uh, I think uh, it, you know we ordered the right uh, weather. Uh, I have to tell you something, Andrew. If, if you guys saw me walking around with a camera, this camera right here, I was taking photos, and I, I took like 100 photos. I'm like, yeah, like sell it, work it, work it, and like... The camera uh, card wasn't seated very well, so um, uh, it's a great scam, though. I, I, I've come to terms with it because, for that moment, I caught someone's attention, and they, um, you know, they kind of uh, looked me back in the eye, or I was like, "That looks really good." So, for some reason, that quarter second of time in the flash and seeing it in the in the screen, it it like I actually went through after I was so disappointed that I didn't have any photos. In my memory, I went through and, and saw the photos in my head because I had seen them. It's an amazing role of. <laughs> yeah, so brain. on that level, I, I felt like uh, I, I accomplished something, and I, and I instead of just you know kind of drinking beer and saying performative hellos and high fives, <laughs> I actually like concentrated on the person, you know, and um, and it's a kind of a cool thing after COVID, you know, we we, we are in the people business, and when we didn't get to see people, it, it was kind of terrible, so. Um, uh, so we're going to have uh, Johan here. Hello. I wanted to first, before we have Johan here, say thank you to Phoenix Beer Co. for hosting this event, for having delicious Bloody Marys and mimosas and beers. And also thank you to Old Ellsworth Brewing, Uncle Bear's Brewing, and to Huss for sharing their delicious beer with everyone. We've also got... Um, Popeye, the head brewer for Phoenix Beer Co., is also going to be on the talking part of this. And <laughs> thanks to all of y'all for being here. So I am now going back to work at the front desk. And there it is. So cheers. Uh, stand by for whenever they, these guys want to start and enjoy breakfast. And we'll come around and chat. And I'm going to try to take some more pictures. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to fail this time. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, it was Bloody Mary's helping with the hangover from yesterday. Hopefully. Right on. Well, everybody, my name is Johan Warnholtz. I'm with uh, Phoenix Magazine. We were, we were lucky enough to work very closely with the Guild on the uh, Arizona Craft Beer Awards last year. And uh, we're very excited to, uh, to be here uh, to kind of chat with some of our amazing breweries. I'm here with Brian from Old Ellsworth. That's me. That's you. Um, and so we're just going to chat a little bit about, I want to know a little bit more about Old Ellsworth and, and uh, you know, what Queen Creek is, is up to these days and what you guys are, are up to. So why don't you start off, just introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do. And 
Uh, well, uh, my name is Brian, obviously one of the owners at Old Ellsworth Brewing Company. We are uh, owned and operated by family. So we have Ryan, who's our head brewer, and Christine, who does most of our paperwork. All I do right now is sign checks and, and run the staff, pretty much. Uh, I used and drink to brew beer. beer. I used to brew beer. But you drink it. I drink a lot yeah. of beer, yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan does most of our, actually all of our brewing now. He's uh, 100% brewing. But yeah, we have a full restaurant. We have a full bar. Um, we brew our own beer on site, uh, but we're what we call Arizona proud. So all of our alcohol and all of our wine comes from Arizona. So we also have a, a scratch kitchen, so we make uh, some pretty awesome food. So if you guys are ever down in the area and want to hang out for lunch, come down and see us for sure. Uh, Queen Creek is growing like a like a weed. It's so yeah. many people moving out. My in-laws just bought a house down there. So We'll, we'll be spending more time time down there for sure. It's the new Scottsdale. Yeah, it's cool. It's super cool. Um, tell us a little bit about your beers. You know, what are your sort of mainstays? Do you have a favorite? You know, tell us a little about maybe something you got coming up soon. Um, so uh, Ryan and I homebrewed for about probably 10 years before we opened the brewery. So we pretty much brewed any style of beer that we like to drink. Um, so we have a tagline, we make beer, people drink it. So if you like beer, come down. We'll have a very broad spectrum from uh, like a super light lager. We have a bing bong, which is super easy drinking. Uh, we have Legends Never Die, which is a hazy IPA. Uh, but then we'll also have like a, a double Imperial Stout, like Boom Chocolat. So we, we have all kinds of stuff. Right now we just have a, a double West Coast here. That's about 8%. It's called Spody Odie Hopalicious, which is brand new. It sounds like you have some interesting uh, beer names. Where? What's the story behind that? Uh, well, we drink a lot of beer, and then we name beers. So uh, <laughs> most of most of the names are um, like pop culture, like yeah. Legends Never Die is yeah. from Sandlot, Sandlot, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, we have uh, a beer called Winnie's Revenge, which is kind of a play on Winnie the Pooh, getting back at everybody. I like That's that. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Very cool. So. Uh, you guys are just in the restaurant. You don't distribute or anything, or, or are you distributing? You have plans to distribute. Where can people find you outside of the? We always have plans to distribute, I but love that. Uh, we are um, we have a very loyal following in Queen Creek, so um, they drink a lot of our beer. Yeah. So uh, as long as we can sell it over the counter, we're going to keep doing that. But we have we have always have plans to distribute, like plans to expand, plans to do stuff. We're we're actually finishing a tap truck right now, so. Uh, we will see that at festivals. It's like a 1954 Stepside delivery truck. It's I pretty love cool. that. It's pretty I love cool. that. Well, very cool. Um, does uh, Does anybody have a, a question? We might open it up just to one or two questions here if anybody wants to ask something. But um, I have all if, the answers. If you haven't been over to their uh, their table, uh, they're right by the door uh, over on the end, and that that double IPA is uh, very tasty. Yeah, uh, goes down nice and smooth for being eight um, yeah. percent. Can you tell us anything more about it? What you guys put in it? Oh, that's a Ryan question. <laughs> um, there's some hops in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, lots of love. Uh, it's actually a beer that's brewed with Arizona grain, right? Uh, Arizona base grain, so it's two row, right? Yeah. So we get a lot of our grain from a, a place called Grain R and D, but it's Sossaman Farms. Um, so they do a lot of awesome, like ancient grains and stuff that, uh, breweries are adding into their, their beers. So they're actually opening a malt house here in a couple of years. Oh, so cool. it'll, it'll be, you'll see that a lot more, but, uh, we use, man, yeah, grain R and D probably in almost all of our beers. So we're what we call hyper local. I love that. I love that. I mean, that's what we're, we're all about here for sure. Um, and then, you know, just to talk, just to top us off here what's what's your favorite beer that you've ever made yourself favorite beer i've ever made myself yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one um we have a a uh it started as a barley wine um and then it kind of turned into a triple ipa but it's called jockey shift so if you ever see it on tap it's it's a, a really good beer and actually one of my favorite beers um we have on tap at the brewery right now it's Ryan's recipe. It's called Fermi's Paradox. It's a, a Belgian quad. It's, it's amazing. That sounds fantastic. That Fermi's Paradox is a, is the whole alien thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it's that. It's out there. Somewhere. Very cool. So a, a Belgian quad. Can't go wrong with one of Nothing those. Nothing wrong with that. Quick plug for Rob's OnlyFans. If you guys want to see beard stroking or hat tipping, <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to Rob's oh, OnlyFans. Gosh. 
<laughs> well, thank you, Brian. Let's give him a round of applause. If you guys haven't been over to Old Ellsworth uh, Table and tried their beer, thank you. Uh, thank you very highly much. Highly recommended. All right. So now with me here, I have Drew, the head brewer over at Uncle Bear's. How you doing, man? Good. Thanks Glad for joining here. us. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. So, Drew was on our uh, Phoenix Magazine podcast uh, just a couple episodes ago. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to it, um, Matt and I over here uh, interview brewers and owners of breweries uh, all over the valley, and uh, we got we got the pleasure of of talking to Drew uh, the other day about Uncle Bears and everything they have going on, and and uh, and kind of their background. So, Drew, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your uh, you know how you how you got to be where you're at now, and and uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm Drew Ortega. Uh, I've been in the beer industry for about eight years now. Um, started off with Mr. Andrew Bauman over there at uh, the Perch Pub and Brewery. Um, we started that little uh, nano brewery out and uh, got my feet wet in there and uh, just got my creative juices out uh, when we were there and then kind of moved on to Uncle Bear's. Um, more of a production style brewery, um, but uh, really trying to hone in on, you know, the craft and uh, just making exceptional beers for everybody. Um, it's been fun. Uh, really enjoyed the uh, canning aspect of it. So uh, really kind of hone that in and uh, you'll kind of see a lot of our one-off stuff is um, really kind of artsy as far as the cans go. My wife does all the can design so i'm really proud of her helping me out on that so but um if you tried the black ipa you'll see um it has my uh packaging text dog chloe on the can <laughs> so um all of the uh all the stars of the cans are uh brewers dogs and um uh, employees dogs and friends dogs so it's a little bit inspiration I love that. I love that. You guys, I mean, the whole Uncle Bear's bear was the owner's dog, right? And then um, a lot of your beers, like Ocean Beach and Beach Bum, those are all based on his time in, in California. Yeah. Um, so you guys have a, a pretty cool story. And you work very closely with the Humane Society. Yes. Uh, right? Every year you guys raise a bunch of money with their Pints for Paws. Yeah. Uh, it's tell a, us a little bit about that. It's definitely a, a big deal for us uh, when uh, Beer Week kind of kicks off. Um, Right now we got our Pints for Paws going on, so you can buy these little cards, um, two, five, ten, twenty dollar, and uh, all the proceeds go to the Humane Society um, to help out our furry friends. Um, last year we raised over fifteen thousand dollars for them, uh, just for this campaign. So it's a big campaign for us, and all the beer sales um, on next Saturday from all of our real retail locations will go out to Pints for Paws. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and then all the locations will actually have, um, you can adopt on next Saturday. So really fun events. Um, great for the, for, for the, our four-legged friends, so. Yeah, Looking how many of you that. out there have, have a dog? Handful of you, yeah. <laughs> Anybody get them from the uh, Humane Society? All right. I love that. I love that. Who's that yelling in the back? Uh, no, that's awesome. So if you guys are around next Saturday, uh, head over to one of the Uncle Bears, and uh, anything you buy will we'll go towards the Humane Society and help some more uh, furry friends find some homes. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, uh, you, you told us a little bit about the Black IPA, but you know, maybe go into it a little bit more in terms of what you put into it, how a Black IPA is made, why it's different from a a regular IPA, and, and then maybe you can talk about that beach bum too. Um, yeah, so the black IPA, it's my favorite style. Um, you know, you get the roastiness uh, a, a little bit, and then um, fully hopped with Chinook, Simcoe, and Amarillo, um, double dry hopped. We treat it like uh, your West Coast IPA. It's uh, hopped vigorously. Um, you're just going to get that black, dark kind of stout look because of the uh, midnight wheat that we use in it so you don't get too much flavor from it um, it's really supposed to kind of if you shut your eyes and you take a sip you know you're drinking an IPA um, but that really feel like that uh, wheat kind of 
mellows it out as far as mouthfeel and uh, complements the hops. Um, it's a it's it's a brewer style. I mean, it's a nerd style beer. Um, I love it. Um, I you know Lost Highway is one of my favorites. It's a black IPA. Um, and then our Beach Bum. Uh, this is probably my favorite beer that I drink religiously. Um, but it's a great beer, Mosaic and Citra hops. Um, I feel like you're cheating when you use Mosaic, but uh, it's a fantastic <laughs> hop. And then uh, we use um, an English floor malt, so it gives it a lot of body. Um, it, it just a fantastic uh, flavor profile to add hops to. Um, it's a great beer. I think we're going to actually, it sounds like we're going to 12-ounce form on this beer, so hopefully it'll be available in uh, Fry's and Safeways here soon. That's awesome. Going back to the Black IPA, because I think it's a it's sort of a uh, underappreciated style. There's not, I mean, obviously there's the the Mother Road uh, one, and, and then you guys have one, and there's a handful of others. But tell us a little bit more about, um, you said that the color comes from the Midnight Wheat, um, but you get that roasted flavor. Is that coming from the same malt? Same, yeah, the same. Um, it, traditionally, you're supposed to not really get that chocolate um you, you you you'll get on a robust porter or a stout um that's why i use the wheat because it just it's all about the color really and body um because whenever we're adding oats or wheats or rice we're just trying to build that body up of that beer um so i mean it's it's really to showcase the hops yeah and then when you when you brew something that's you know darker and kind of roasty like this is there is there a reason you go with a certain hop versus another? Are there like tropical versus kind of piney flavors that go better with that sort of roasted yeah. flavor? So to me, um, I always like to throw one fruity kind of varietal of hop, which is Amarillo for me. Um, I'm a big Amarillo fan. And then you get the dank, um, you know, just kind of West Coast stuff with the Chinook and Simcoe. Um, Simcoe does have some fruitiness to it, too, but uh, I get more of the dankness off of it, a um, little bit of floral. So it kind of balances. You're, you're balancing that Amarillo with the other two hops. Um, I'm, I'm all about balance. I want to drink everything balanced, um, even though, you know, yeah, you're, you say it's an IPA, 70 IBUs, but let's kind of mask that to where it's drinkable and it's approachable for everybody. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's it's very tasty. Um, do you happen to know, you know, when you when you're drinking a beer like this, it's got that that roasted flavor, that hoppy flavor. You know, what what sort of pairs well for the, with this, like food wise? Like, what um, would you eat with this? Spicy things for sure. Um, barbecue, but I love barbecue, so <laughs> that goes and, well with everything. And sushi. I mean, you you know, you got the sriracha and the jalapeno and uh, all those other kind of flavor bursts. Definitely IPAs will clean your palate and uh, introduce you to some new things when you're eating uh, some nice food. Right on, right on. And so um, for you as a, as a beer drinker, I know you, you, you started out home brewing uh, a while back, right? Yeah. Um, 2000. <laughs> in terms of like, you know, I feel like everybody has their, their uh, palate kind of progression you know some people start right out the gate with the ipa some people kind of start with their you know wheat beers and things like that tell us a little bit about like what you were first into what's the first sort of craft beer that you you got into and and uh and how, how you sort of moved along on that so that that was that started uh in san diego um it was actually a red nectar ale um more fruit forward um with the hops and uh malty I feel like when you start drinking um, beers, especially, you kind of lean towards the malty beers. Um, they're a little bit more approachable than, say, just the hops in your face. Um, and then you kind of, just like with anything, your palate progresses, and then you kind of move towards all of a sudden you're drinking those hoppier beers that you used to hate or those sours. Um, it, you know, it's a natural progression in my mind. Uh, it, uh, you're expanding your palate. You're expanding... Uh, what you're going to taste, and uh, you're, you're kind of understanding beers a little bit better, I think. Um, hops and just the varietals and the things that uh, you get out, different um, characteristics you get out of it, it's, 
it's another world to me. Um, that's why I like to play with hops so much. Um, but yeah, so it was the Red Nectar Ale. It was actually a Firestone Walker shoot off brand. Um, so it wasn't from Firestone Walker, but it was a fantastic beer. It had this this beautiful red hue to it, and it was hop forward, um, but it was more on the fruitier side of hops. So that really intrigued me. And uh, I love to cook. I love to just kind of create. So uh, it was right in, right in my wheelhouse. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so Uncle Bear's won a couple of awards at the Arizona Craft Beer Awards, if I remember correctly. Um, you want to tell us about the beers that won and, and kind of what, you know, what, what that meant to you? So we won um, bronze for our Ocean Beach West Coast IPA, which it's a pretty big feat to me. I mean, West Coast, everybody does the West Coast, so you can get pretty much a Westie from any brand out there. Um, but to be recognized on that level, um, especially in this state, like we're all competing friendly, but... At the end of the day, you want to make a better product than everybody else. So, a <laughs> uh, little bit of ego in there, but, uh, but yeah, no, um, super proud of that beer. Changed it when I started with uh, Uncle Bears because I'm from San Diego, and you know, a quintessential West Coast is hopped in your face and get after it. Um, and so we did a little tweaking of that beer, um, and it won bronze. So I'm, I'm super stoked on that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, give us a little bit of a, a preview of what you guys, you know, what Uncle Bears has coming up soon. Uh, maybe some releases you're doing here soon. And, and uh, all right. Yeah, um, let us know. Well, if you got a chance to visit us yesterday, you saw uh, Debo's uh, Kettle Sour Double IPA. Um, that's, um, that's my baby. That's uh, my wife and I's uh, dog. RIP, but uh, Kettle Sour, double IPA, it's double dry hopped. It goes against all the rules, but it works so well. Um, it's just a tropical bomb. Um, that So that, that'll that be available at all our restaurants. Um, and then we did a beer that I work in a can next week, uh, Rye in the Hood. Um, it's a red rye IPA. Um, we did Mosaic and Amarillo on that one, double dry hopped. Um, like I said, it's going to can. It came out phenomenal this year, so I'm super amped on that one. And then we also, still waiting to see it and taste it, but uh, we went down to 1912 and also brewed another sour with them. Um, did some blending on that. Uh, he's going to enhance our Alan over at 1912. is going to throw some uh, pear and apricot on that bad boy to age on it. So. We'll see it when we get it. Um, I'm looking forward to that one. But Debo's is all, also another 1912 collab we do every year. So definitely get it while you can. We only did 30 barrels this uh, time around. We did 60 last year, um, and it's going quick. So Yeah, I, I tried that Debo's when we did our podcast with you uh, a few weeks ago, and it is, it is delightful. I remember telling you um, hoppy sours, you know, or, or – Sour IPAs uh, were kind of my gateway into the uh, hoppy flavor profile. Before that, I, I really wasn't into it. Uh, more of like a you know wheat beer, um, you know Hefeweizens, Belgians, like maltier beers, and then uh, and then I, I started drinking some of those sour IPAs, and and this sort of opened me up to that. So uh, very that Debo is very very good. So if you haven't had a chance to try it, make sure you uh, go check that out for sure. Um, awesome. Well, thanks, Drew. I, if you do, you have anything else to do you want to plug while you're here? I know, I know. Uh, Brian was, you know, he plugged something there at the end. So, oh if, yeah, I guess I should plug. Um, so, the uh, brewery tap room um, where I work, uh, Jermaine and Lindsay, um, our full kitchen's opening up starting next Saturday. So, not only will we be doing the pints for pause, but uh, we'll have a full kitchen, pizzas. Uh, wings, the whole gamut. So we're looking forward to that. Maybe a little bit more traffic. We're in a little kind of weird area that's uh, it's a business park, so it's it's kind of off the beaten path. But uh, come down and uh, check out the arcade, and you won't be uh, you won't be sad about it. Yeah, no, that arcade is really awesome. Well, thanks, Drew. Thanks so much. If you guys Cheers. haven't had a chance to go over to their table and try their uh, black IPA or their beach bum, 
uh, Tropical IPA, make sure you do that. Thank you so much. Rob Fulmer, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause <laughs> to Rob. Hey, uh, uh, again, um, thanks to everyone who's uh, here today. Um, we have some people showing up as we speak, and so um, uh, I, I guess the uh, the food's still going, and uh, everyone's got uh, a drink. Is anyone a, Bl a Bloody Mary fan at all? Yeah, me too. Um, I, I, I grew up in Wisconsin, and it was a thing. And let me tell you, have you ever had, like, more than two Bloody Marys? I, I've never had one Bloody Mary. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've had, uh, I went on a Bloody Mary crawl. Oh, and, boy. And I, I invented that. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you why that's a bad idea. Um, it's not the alcohol, which is there, obviously, but it's the salt. Oh. The next day, I felt like I was lost at sea. <laughs> my lips were all puffy. My face was swollen. I went with... Um, I went with a, a couple beer reps, and uh, I texted. I'm like, I feel so bloated and salty. And she texted back, my cat can't stop licking me. <laughs> There's uh, some uh, blood pressure issues with that much salt, probably. <laughs> probably, too. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I, I just wanted to um, you know, let everyone know why this festival is important for the Guild and what the Guild does. The Brewers Guild... Uh, represents the breweries, and we promote and we protect them. Um, and mostly because every state has its own laws. Um, I just broke a liquor law just about, I don't know, five minutes ago. I was casually talking to Andrew, my deputy director out there, doing the check-in. This here for Andrew, yeah. I was walking out there, talking to him, and I'm like, oh, I have a drink, and we're uh, I'm not inside the licensed premise. So all those things are run by a liquor department, you know, and, like, they, you know, they enforce those laws, but, like, we... We have some of the best brewing laws in the country, and it's because you guys show up to our festival and attend, and um, uh, that pays a lot of uh, my salary, Andrew's salary. We have a legislative uh, uh, council, and um, we have an office, and um, you know, uh, so we really appreciate that. And, and, and thanks for doing your part. Uh, we got something coming up. Um, have you ever been um, to Baja Beer Festival in Tucson? I have not. No. And you're not going this year either, are you? Uh, I, I I could try. I think it's your birthday or something. It is like my that. birth. It's literally <laughs> the day after my birthday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's Saturday, April first. Yeah. Tucson. It's in uh, Armory Park. It's back on. Uh, it's a. I don't know. Have you have you you haven't Tucson. been? Tucson. I've heard of Tucson. Is that? <laughs> that's uh, somewhere nearby, right? It's the old pueblo. So it's uh. It, <laughs> and, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, they have their own um, vibe for sure. Uh, Twenty-one breweries. You, you, yeah. what, you I know I you've mean, had people on your podcast from Tucson. Yes, we've had we've had a, a handful of breweries from Tucson on our podcast. But uh, I mean, yeah, some of the best beer uh, for sure is coming out of Tucson. I mean, you got you got Barrio and you got um, Crooked Tooth is down there. Uh, I've, there's, Ran there's, Ranch Hand is kind of almost in 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 yeah. in Tucson. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Button, Catalina. Button, one of the best uh, Schwartz fire beers truck, I've ever had. Um, Borderlands. Borderlands, that, what is it, Noche? Noche Doce. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I'm not, we're not going to name all 21 yeah, no. today. I'm, I'm done, uh, I'm tapped out. Um, <laughs> but if you are interested, if you're Tucson um, curious, <laughs> we have that <laughs> festival uh, uh, down there. It's in uh, Armory Park. It's, uh, it's kind of in a shady area. Uh, there are monuments that honor <laughs> veterans there, so um, you know. But but it's uh, it's just south, like a block from uh, Pueblo Vida, which we didn't talk about. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's a great way to help support and um, you know sort of convince the people from Tucson that we do love them. We just don't think about them every day. Um, that's what they want. Yeah. So uh, we have that April first, and did anyone look at the ticket? Like the other announcement we had in there. On the, on the back of the drink ticket yesterday, the, they didn't have numbers on it, the, the top part. Anyway, um, we're, we're going to move Real Wild and Woody to Flagstaff. Yeah. We're nice. calling it Real Wild and Woodsy. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, so that's going to be the first Saturday of June. and um, Outdoors? Outdoors. Oh, my um, gosh, a beer festival outdoors in June in Arizona? Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> it's in Flagstaff. <laughs> It'll be... What I've learned about Flagstaff from um, um, I, I, I living up there part-time now um, is if you don't have a beer festival in June, you get rain. So we're going to do it in June, and we're going to 
I know there's a lot of other things going on up there. Um, but we're gonna, it's going to be limited tickets because we're going to start small because I don't want to upset everybody up there in Flagstaff that a bunch of breweries are going to be, again, invading their town. But that's, that's our plan. And, and those things help propel us uh, to, do, um, to do laws and stuff. Like, I, I love I, that. Uh, uh, we, again, we have some of the best brewery laws in the country, and I like to keep it that way. Uh, we've been um, uh, the first bill that I ran uh, over nine years ago. Uh, we we lost, but we ended up winning because we got more the second time around. And the second time around, we we got the ability for small breweries to sell each other's beer up to twenty percent. So you know, I can't tell you how many breweries say, "Oh, you know, we'll be fine, and we don't need to do that." And then they when they when they start up or they open a new location, then they're short of beer. They're like. This is so cool. And then, you know, the collaboration stuff. It used to be when you collaborated with somebody, you had only you could only serve at the at the brewery that it was made at. You so wow. all those collaborations couldn't be poured at other places. So those are the small things that we chip away at and um, so again, thank you. Your ticket pays for all that. I mean, you're doing good work by having a good time yesterday. So that's all yeah. I wanted to say uh, about that, but um, thanks for doing this, Johan. Yeah, man, of course. Uh, you you asked me to come somewhere in the morning to talk about beer and drink <laughs> beer. I'm gonna be there. So right on. Who, who's next? Uh, we'll we'll take a quick we'll take a break. But who's yeah. next? Uh, I think next up is Popeye uh, from from Phoenix Beer Co. Uh, another big round of applause for Phoenix Beer Co. for hosting us here today. Right on. So uh, if you guys don't know Popeye, that is uh, not his real name, uh, but there are. A thousand uh, of his real name, and so he's. We're just gonna know him by Popeye. That's just that's just what he is. It's Popeye. He's he's a he's a wonderful human being. He's a great brewer, and uh, and he's you know one of the major driving forces behind uh, Phoenix Beer Co., uh, which used to be way back in the day called uh, Phoenix Ale Company, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was it's, a long time ago. Let's let him tell a story. Yeah, we'll t let him tell a story. All but, right. Uh, we're, I'm going to take a quick break because, you know, you drink too many beers. you got to use the restroom. And then uh, we'll come back and uh, talk to Popeye. Cheers. All right. Oh, you're just ready to jump right in. Yeah, we're just going to do this. Everybody, it's your pick. You pick the microphone. You can, you can sit real close if you want. It's up to you. What's the camera doing? Whatever. All right. Okay. All right, so for those of you who don't know, this is Popeye. This is his real name. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, he is the head brewer here at uh, Phoenix Beer Co. Production manager. Production operations manager, manager. Operations but manager. I make You're, sure the right beer is in the right tanks at the right time. There you go. That's very important. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, you guys have this fantastic location here. Uh, I grew up near here, and this place was always kind of a, a dead zone. So you guys are alivening and livening it up for sure. Um, tell us a little bit about you know the the what you got going on here and uh, get us started. Well, so yeah, we um, uh, Phoenix Beer's been around since 2019. Uh, we actually got this place. So it used to be Buster's for anybody who know, who is used to the area, um, and we actually took uh, yeah took the space over, uh, redid the patio uh, for obviously these lovely views that are out here and the lovely walking path. Uh, and then yeah, we uh, we you know we make all our beers down at the brewery at 30th Street and Washington, and then we have this nice restaurant to be able to have people get to try our beers far away from where we actually make all the beer. So I love that. I love that. And you guys, uh, you guys have quite quite the the list here in terms of you know ranges of different types of beers. Uh, some of them award winning. Yes. So yes, yes. you want to tell us a little bit about about that, about some of your beers and <laughs> and, and those awards that you won. So this uh, lovely magazine here in town, Phoenix Magazine. Oh man, I've heard <laughs> of it. It's great. Uh, they had a Arizona Best of uh, Festival. So all Arizona breweries uh, basically sent out their best stuff, uh, and the Monsoon that's on inside. It's what I'm drinking right now. Uh, won the best in show and best Arizona IPA uh, for its category. So uh, it's been a really nice uptick for us. People have learned who we were, who didn't know who we were before. Uh, and it's been, it's been great for us. Um, uh, then people find our other beers like Arizona Gold 
and our new uh, Hefeweizen Desert Grifter and sort of a lot of other beers that we make because people come to our brewery just thinking they're going to see IPAs and then they go, oh wait, you make an amber and a Hef and a porter and a stout. And, you know, we, we, we kind of, we, we kill ourselves a little bit, but we do have like 15 year-round beers that we make. So it's incredible. We, uh, and we don't, only have so many tanks. So we have to just, it's a juggling act, but we try and get everything out all the time uh, and try and be able to be creative and have seasonals and everything else. So um, uh, the brew team that we have, uh, there's three of us. Uh, we we do our best, <laughs> and uh, and uh, we just try and get beer out. And um, we just hired a fourth guy, a nice cellar guy, a uh, hunter. You guys might have seen at the festival yesterday, uh, and he's loving what he's doing. So we're you know trying to expand and just trying to get as much beer out there as we can. One of my favorite beers that you guys make is the Marenzi Copper. Yes, yeah. And you guys uh, barrel aged that one before too. We have. Yes. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that one. Uh, for those of you who don't know about, you know, what Marenzi is, I think that's a mm. town down in South uh, South Arizona. So tell us a little bit about the Marenzi Copper and what the the inspiration behind that one is. So one of the things we wanted to do with our beers uh, was have names that were Arizona centric. So one of the five C's of Arizona's copper. So instead of having our amber called an amber, we called it a copper. And uh, Marenzi is a town uh, here in Arizona that was famous for having like one of the biggest copper mines. Uh, one of our salespeople actually lived near there in Safford and Marenzi, and he was all about it. And he was very excited to get to kind of pay homage to his hometown and all those other things. And, um, and, and we were all about it. And so we get to have like this nice little story also to tell people when they go, what's Marenzi? And then bartenders oh God, and the guy at the the guy at the tap rooms and all those other things they get to they get to tell those stories so it's 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 really great yeah no i love that um we had some uh some some bo- some, some hooligans podcast some hooligans bombers, out yeah hooligans. um so you guys were at uh obviously at strong beer yesterday you had a huge huge tent we did uh, yeah, very big tent what <laughs> it uh what was that like trying to build that space and and you know you guys had a dj like what Tell us a little bit about that. That's it was fun. It was by far the biggest tent I've ever been in in my <laughs> entire life. Uh, it was. I mean, it was a good day. Uh, we had. We do also uh, make Sonoran white chocolate for Sonoran Brewery in our brewery. So we had Sonoran on one half of our tent, and then we had our jockey box with uh, Desert Grifter, the half, uh, the Monsoon, the Zanjaro, which is our new hazy IPA, and uh, our Arizona Gold. Uh, and then we had a DJ in between. So uh, not only that, we do actually partner with the Arizona Wrestling Federation. If you guys saw the wrestling ring that was out there. Who saw the wrestling match? Anybody see the wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. That was so fun. Uh, Arizona Wrestling Federation has been with us for over a year now, and every couple months they actually do that same show, not the same exact show, but a show like that in our actual brewery. And actually a week from yesterday, so next Saturday, the 25th, that's actually happening at our brewery. So if you guys liked what you saw yesterday, imagine 200 people filing into our brewery and you guys all get to see the same thing. Uh, Chubby, uh, who has the well, title for something, Chris, called baby. out the guy he's fighting next I week in the ring, are. you know, stuff like that. So um, it's a really a great time. Uh, we have a great time with those, with the wrestling guys, and we become good friends with all of them because they're like one big troop, and they have their storylines, and so some guys fight sometimes, and some guys fight you? some other times, and stuff like that. But it's a lot of fun, and um, that's down at 30th Street in Washington down at our brewery. So if you guys, I mean, we have chairs, we have, you know, all of our delicious beer on tap, uh, but yeah, you guys should come down next Saturday if you want to, and uh, uh, it's a great time, and... They put on a great show. They they really do. So, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, man, this Hefeweizen is delightful. By thank, the way, uh, thank you. Uh, I you know, my my favorite my favorite beer in the entire world is Vine Stefaner. So my my Hefeweizen bar is very high, and this is this is very 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 good. Yeah, with with that beer, we tried to go as uh, traditional German Hef as we could. So it's got uh, German Hef you see, so you get those banana notes, those clove yep. notes. Uh, and then just a really nice wheat wheat base uh, wheat base for the beer. So, so tell us a little bit about your background as a brewer, uh, where you kind of got started. I think Rob is probably going to jump in uh, <laughs> because I know the story. So Rob's going to want to join us. Uh, so I'll scoot over. Okay, uh, but yeah, tell us about where where you got started and how you ended up where you're at now. As you know, the the one and only legendary Popeye. <laughs> the one and only legendary Popeye. So. Um, 
So I uh, I went to ASU, uh, graduated. Woo. Yes. Woo. Go Devils. <laughs> uh, graduated from ASU with a degree in philosophy and creative writing. Huh. Oh, boy. Uh, I also had four minors, including marketing, psychology, <laughs> and uh, humanities and music. Uh, and so I, basically I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I drank a lot of beer at Four Peaks at the time. Uh, and one day I actually talked to Andy Ingram, who's the head brewer over at Four Peaks, and I said, uh, what do I got to do to do this? And he went, go get a degree and go get experience. Uh, so I left Arizona. I moved to Chicago. Uh, I went to the Siebel Institute in Chicago, which is one of the highly acclaimed brewing schools that you can go to. Uh, and then I worked at uh, multiple breweries in Chicago and St. Louis. Uh, and then my wife and I uh, decided to move back here because both of our families moved back here. So um, I was in Chicago for about six years. I uh, worked at Goose Island, uh, which is a big one. Everybody kind of knows. Um, I also worked at um, Metropolitan, which is in Ravenswood. It only makes loggers. So I got a crash course in loggers only. Um, and then I worked at Off Color Brewing, which does off-the-wall stuff, barrel aging and stuff like that. So I learned a lot about barrel aging and stuff like that in Chicago. And then um, I worked at a place called Perennial in St. Louis, which is a smaller brewery. But I actually used to commute every day from Chicago to St. Louis. What? to go brew and I had to be there by 5 a.m. to start and then if I got too drunk I'd sleep on a couch if not I'd like drive a back four to hour it's train a, ride? It's a, it's a three hour drive four hour train I know yikes so <laughs> wow. I do I do like brewing beer <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if there was any question whatsoever in my love of beer and just the, the uh, just in general just the the industry uh, I should I should say something so the I just wanted to weigh in, and I'm going to. Um, oh, by the way, uh, uh, first time call, a long time listener, <laughs> Rob, uh, Tempe, Arizona. Um, uh, I just want to throw this out there, and I'll explain my vote, and then I, I want to hear from some of the tables as I walk around. Um, of course, you know I love Arizona beer, and, and I think pound for pound, we fu we we punch above our weight class. We've got a giant metro city as large as Los Angeles in square footage or mileage, and, and, and population of Philadelphia. And you know, right now, if we all decided that we wanted to drive for an hour and a half, we could find a remote, desert, beautiful place. Even in this weather, we could all die in extreme beauty, and that's what I love about it. You can't do that anywhere else. Nevertheless, I'm going to tip my hat to the best beer city in America, and that is Chicago, Illinois. And if you say San Diego, I will fight you. You need to go to Chicago, and I'll let these guys clean up after I leave. So, like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I've yeah. only been to one. I've yeah. only been to one brewery in Chicago, and that was a little place called Half Acre. Half Acre, also. Half very Acre, good beer, yeah. uh, very good beer. Yeah. And and it was great. Uh, but yeah, I haven't spent a little a lot of time there. So tell us a little bit about it, you know, Chicago's brewery yeah, scene. Yeah, so so I lucked out. So I moved to Chicago in uh, 2009, and at that time, craft beer was really exploding. Uh, and every single brewery that was expanding outside of their home market sent their beer to Chicago. So I was like the first to try, get to try, you know, West Coast stuff that had never been all the way, you know, to the Midwest or to the East Coast and stuff. And like just trying beers, you know, Stone was big, but Stone was sending stuff just to Chicago that they sent nowhere else. Wow. Uh, Lagunitas was sending stuff to Chicago. They were only sending to Chicago, and then they liked Chicago so much they actually opened a second brewery in Chicago to be able to give everybody all the beer they needed. Um, I got to go to Wisconsin, and I got to, you know, get New Glarus and some of those beers because Chicago's, you know, an hour drive away from Wisconsin and stuff like that. So that whole Midwest sort of culture of beer drinking and everything was very strong. And uh, we had very loyal customers. I knew people who I would see twice a week, three times a week when I was selling beer. Uh, when I was in Chicago, I was doing the brewing stuff, but I was also working for a distributor selling beer to accounts. I was also working at a, basically a BevMo, but in the Midwest, it's called Binnie's. Same idea though, just a liquor department. I was running an entire beer department there. So I got the, you know, the first runs of all the barrel aged beers, of all everything. And one bottle accidentally got broken sometimes and I took it home and drank it and, you know, <laughs> some of that. So, uh, so I, got to, I got to build a lot of that. And then while I was in Chicago, uh, the Cicerone was becoming a big thing. So I ended up, having, I ended up taking the Cicerone test and a passing, so I'm a you know certified Cicero and all those other things. So, kind of with all of those things, it's you know, Chicago is great because there is that beer culture. Everyone likes to eat and drink in the Midwest. 
Uh, and that's, that's because if you're anywhere outside of Chicago, there's nothing else to do. Correct, correct. And it's very cold, so you need a nice base layer to yeah. get through the winters and everything else. But uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, Chicago, the five years I was in Chicago were fantastic. And it really opened my eyes a bunch to beer just in general. And then when I moved back, I actually got a job at Four Peaks because I went to Four Peaks with my resume five years later, and Andy Ingram looks at it and goes, wow, you did it. Uh, okay, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, let's see about getting you a job. And uh, so I, wor I worked there for five years, uh, and then, uh, you know, AB bought them and all, everything that went along with that, and that was really not kind of what I wanted to do. So I uh, moved on, and, um, and now I'm at Phoenix, and Phoenix has been great. When I started there, there was only two of us making all the beer. Uh, and then at some point, you know, the head brewer became the head brewer and I became the operations guy because I just, I had too much knowledge on the operations side of, you know, how to pay taxes and how to, uh, <laughs> you know, how to, all how the to fun just, stuff, all the fun stuff. Yeah. So, um, but it's been, you know, it's been great. Phoenix, I mean, Phoenix has been fantastic, uh, for me as well, because it gave me that experimental gene again, where I got to, I get to do all the barrel aging for us and I get to do a lot of the lab work and I get to do, uh, you, you know, do one-off collabs with one your friends at Phoenix with, Magazine. With really cool magazines and stuff, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, right now we actually have a collab on with our friends at Simple Machine. It's a chocolate tiramisu stout, if you guys Ooh, haven't tried it. I yeah, need Marsh, to try Marshall, that. Marshall and I have been good friends for many years, so uh, he's the owner at Simple Machine. So, um, And we have more collabs coming down the the line, I just can't talk about them yet. So, I love it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give me I'm another monsoon. Out. Give me another monsoon, and I might. I might I'm gonna put it out into into the uh, into the world here, and just to sort of manifest this. But uh, we Phoenix Magazine puts on a an event every year uh, called Best Fest. Uh, it's our Best of the Valley event. It's sort of a big party. It's indoors in the middle of the summer in downtown Phoenix. You guys were a part of it last year. Yes. Uh, yes. Phoenix Beer Co. Uh, has won Best of the Valley, uh, I think, several times. <laughs> and so we're going we're gonna to do a collaboration that's going to that's gonna come out for that event. For that event, if everything and lines if up perfectly. If everything lines correctly. up perfectly. I'm, I'm manifesting <laughs> it right now. Uh, so we'll have a Best Fest collab beer. Yes. And it'll be Phoenix Magazine's first beer. Yeah. 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 it will be great. First of many, hopefully. Yeah, first of very first many. Of many. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can't serve my homebrew uh, at any of these events because everyone would would be appalled. I will say, <laughs> Johan is now a very experienced homebrewer. No, and he makes fantastic. Uh, no, homebrew no, beer. I've been brewing for like he two just, months and they're just, all terrible. Yeah, he just shouldn't be <laughs> giving him anybody else. <laughs> no, yeah. If you like, uh, if you like ciders, then my beer might. <laughs> it's all green apple. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Anyway, um, so I kind of want to see if Drew and Brian want to come up and join us for a little powwow. Maybe all four of us can can tell some jokes and stories and and talk about Phoenix's beer industry and everything. So, Drew, Brian, you guys want to come up and uh, and join the party? <laughs> Scoot over, Popeye. Get out of the sun. <laughs> Baking in the sun over here. We will be at Dishman. Oh, yeah. Uh, a, a quick plug. Uh, Phoenix Magazine's putting on a food festival uh, on March 5th. And it is our uh, our first or our second year that we put on. It's called Dish Fest. Uh, it's in downtown Scottsdale Dish at the Clayton Fest. House. Dish. And uh, Phoenix Beer Co. will be, will be there. Phoenix um, Beer Co. <laughs> Dish Fest. So if, if you're interested, uh, you know, go to phoenixmag.com, and, and there's more information there. But it's a really great food festival. Some of the best... <laughs> Restaurants in the valley. All right, gentlemen, how we how we doing? How we feeling? What's our beer count for the day so far? Uh, none. Uh, I always tell my kids, um, if mom asks, this is two. <laughs> <laughs> it's always two. It's how many beers always have you got? Two. It's just two. This always is just my two. second. I've only, I only had two beers. Yeah, the first one and the last one. Yeah. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Rats get stitches, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys are obviously a big part of the uh, Arizona beer community, um, and you have all been part of it for several years now. Uh, you said you've been here for you've been in the industry for about eight years. Yeah. Uh, Brian, 
How uh, long? Coming up on six. It's coming up on six. Popeye. Fourteen. Fourteen years. He's so Fourteen. Old. So you guys, you guys have seen the community, the the industry, the 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 whole scene here grow a lot over the last few years. Tell us like a little bit about you know what what you've seen, you know what how you know how you've seen it grow and what you think about that. Drew, you want to start? Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, just the explosion. Uh, I think when Andrew and I started at the perch, there was maybe a handful like 20 maybe um and now we're upwards of 100 i don't know with all the 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 closings and whatnot but um just to see the growth and um really the impact that uh arizona beer scene has i mean we're smaller than most but uh we pack a lot of punch i mean um if you see what we've meddled as far as the state goes a smaller state and uh just the the quality that's coming out of the state. I'm really proud of uh, you know all the uh, the breweries and what we're pushing out there. Um, I'll, I'll kind of chime in, I guess. Uh, one of the coolest things about the Arizona craft beer scene is the Arizona craft beer scene. Like it's it's a, an actual community. Uh, we all kind of play together, and and I don't know that anybody really deletes anyone from their sandbox. Like. It, our own experience for the first nine months that we were open, we didn't we didn't brew beer because our system wasn't there. So we had probably 15, 16 collaborations that we did with other breweries around the state. I mean, this was six years ago, but we brewed beer with you guys. We brewed beer with Oso. Like we, we did beer with whoever would give us a spot. So, uh, and that was pretty cool for us just to kind of expose ourselves to everybody. So we try to give that back, but also not only like with each other, but it's, uh, I don't know. We do so much for charities, and I think everybody's kind of tied into different charities. You guys are. Totally. You guys are. Like, we do local stuff as much as possible. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the actual craft beer community is a community. Like, yeah. we're it's, – it's one of the coolest industries I've ever been involved in. I mean, that's my plug. <laughs> Popeye? Uh, I'll, I'll second what he said. It, it's, you know – Every everybody is friends with everybody. Like a day like yesterday, where we all get to see each other, and we all, you know we all get to do our setup at nine a.m. way before everybody else shows up. Yeah. But then we're all walking around afterwards, and we're like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" You know, and like it just everyone's catching up, and and uh, that that is the cool part about this uh, just Arizona scene in general is everybody's you know everybody's friends with everybody else. Everybody likes to do collabs with each other. Yeah. We like to see what your system's doing. You want to come see what our system's doing, yeah. you know, and, you know, little tips and tricks and little, <laughs> little different things that people do and stuff like that. But, it, you know, like they said, I mean, like, that is the best part about the Arizona beer scene is we are unique in that we're very spread out as well because we do have Flagstaff breweries. We do have Sedona breweries. We do have... There's a place you know, called Tucson, apparently. There's also a Tucson. I, <laughs> I went to ASU. I don't know anything about Tucson, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, but no, those you know those little things like that where you're just you know we, we do actually expand very far distances away yeah. from each other, but still all like to include everybody and, and be a part of uh, whatever we can do. So it's definitely something I've noticed, kind of coming in from a non-brewing. Uh, perspective, but, you know, entering the community, uh, which is something I always wanted to do, and really because of our beer festival and our beer awards, I've, 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 I've had a chance to meet all you guys and kind of become part of this uh, community in, in one way or another, and it, it's this, like, you know, uh, rising tide lifts all ships attitude. Yeah, sure. You could have a brewery open across the street from another brewery, and the brewers from the one or at the other celebrating their opening and 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 they're collaborating and you, you know you have you you mentioned Marshall at Simple Machine like I I have a hard time going to like a a, a bottle shop and and not seeing a like so and so collab with Simple Machine can you know on every shelf because it's like everybody works together and everybody you know shares and and collaborates and and that's such a cool thing that I I don't think you see in almost any other industry. You know, like you open a coffee shop across the street from another coffee shop and and like there's beef, right? Like yeah. but but with yeah. beer it's like coffee cool you know, the, the whole <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea behind beer in my mind is like is sharing it, right? It's it's community. It's 
you know, I go get these these big barrel aged stouts from you know so and so brewery, and they stay in my fridge until I have two or three people at my house that I can share them with because I'm not going to sit and drink a fifteen percent barrel aged monster by myself. It's just yeah. not something I want to do. So he's also a new father, so <laughs> he's going to start doing that <laughs> soon. But. When but the kids in bed, I <laughs> just yeah, I just think that's such a cool thing uh, about the Phoenix beer community. Um, you know, the Arizona beer community in general is that it is a it is a community that that yeah. all works co- cohesively like that. So, um, yeah, no, I love I love hearing that from you guys. Um, so what do you guys think? Can I add something? Yes, please. It's a little, does Kim a Ortega. lot of people know? He doesn't. Oh, sorry. I am <laughs> Drew's wife. <laughs> he wasn't around for strong beer last year because he was actually in the hospital. Oh, no. Little does he like people to know. But <laughs> it was a crazy weird thing. But to to go off of this community and how much that, it like, it brings a tear to my eye because I have a very scary situation. They did a fundraiser for us, Old yeah. Ellsworth. They're our good friends. We love Drew I and know. Kim. <laughs> and my phone's gone. But not only that, BRI and Oso made a beer on his behalf for hospital bills. Um, the Guild cut a check. It was like, that's not what people do, you know, in yeah. other states. And Yeah, you ask a car that. salesman if he got any support when he went to the hospital. He's going to be like, no, bro. No, yeah, right? <laughs> so that that's just like, that's forefront of our brain. It's like, you never think something will happen to you, but guess who's there is every single brewery. So, yeah, no, I love that. I love that. <laughs> yes. Um, so now that we've uh, debriefed from uh, the strong, strong beer festival yesterday, uh, new venue. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on how it went this year? And, uh, you know, get, give us, give us a, a teaser of what you're hoping to do in the future. For strong beer, maybe um, a, a style you've thought of. It was almost scary because it was so smooth <laughs> and um, no stress, which is <laughs> crazy. Like, I remember, I mean, eight years ago when I started this, and I'd just be frantically, oh, my gosh, this is going to happen. It's going to be 5,000, 10,000 people in here in a second. But uh, it was so smooth and uh, seamless. Uh, it was, yeah, uh, no problems. Um don't know how they pulled it off, but it, it happened that way. So, Bravo, Arizona Crap Brewers Guild. Uh, I think in the past, it's always been a concern for, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about the elephant in the room. It's always been a concern for us small guys. Like, we're not a big brewery. Um, we're less than 500 barrels a year, so, and we don't distribute. Um, we always felt like we didn't get a fair shake necessarily on a, on a strong beer in, in the Phoenix location because there's all these kind of choke points as it goes through distributorships uh, when you first walk in. But this, I, I actually like this venue a lot. I felt like it was even playing field across the board, like um, kind of more highlighted Arizona breweries. So uh, we had a lot more foot traffic, a lot more interest, a lot more exposure. So it makes it worth it for us for sure. And we'll definitely, like we always support the Guild, so we'll always come out. Love that. Uh, I feel like the super VIPs keep getting in earlier and earlier every year. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> but uh, thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, to, to second that, I actually thought, I thought, I thought the layout was great this year and, yeah. and we were able to, you know, there, there were obviously the section there, you know, there was the villages here and there and, and everything, but um Everybody had lines, but it didn't feel like the lines were overbearing. I don't know how, from your guys' perspective, but at least for us, as being the guys pouring and being the guys shaking hands and everything out front, it's like nothing seemed too overbearing for any of any of our employees or anybody who was there helping. We actually had a couple of restaurant people who are here today who were down there pouring and stuff, and they were like, wow, that was so smooth. And I was like, it doesn't always go like that. Like, today was a very smooth day, which was yeah. great. So. So yeah, I'll great. do a I'll do a quick shout out to the the staff at Salt River Fields. Like those guys are awesome. Yep. Um, Sean and Chris, right? Sean yeah, and Chris, yeah, is that right? Um, those two always run smooth events. They always try to help out as much as possible with the people exhibiting. So love those guys. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, as a 
festival goer, not a uh, you know staff or brewery member. I, I I agree. It was very. I mean, the line getting in was easy to get through. Uh, you know, the whole get your wristband the day before option I think was awesome. Um, uh, it was. I di- I wasn't able to do that because, like Popeye said, I have uh, a two month old, and I wasn't able to get away on Friday to, to get my wristband. But it was kind of funny standing in line and seeing all the people walk up, thinking that they were just going to get in, and then they didn't have a wristband, and then having to walk all the way back to the line. <laughs> that was kind of funny. But yeah, I mean, I, overall, like you, I walked into the festival, and it felt like it. It felt spread out enough to where like I didn't feel. Uh, piled on with all this crowd, um, but it felt condensed enough to where I could hit all the breweries, I could visit everybody, I could see everything without feeling like I had to walk a mile. So the, the, the layout was brilliant. I thought the, uh, like you said, that none of the lines felt super long. If the lines were longer, they, they were, you know, people got through it real quick. So super, super easy to be a attendee for this event and you know anytime you have a, a, a huge event like that as as somebody who plans events uh you always get a little nervous about like you know are people worried about standing in line too long or does you know do they not visit somebody because the line is too long etc and and the the event yesterday i thought went super super smooth uh and it felt it felt really cohesive i don't know if andrew and rob you know in the moment always felt like everything was going smoothly. I, I, <laughs> I can attest so. to that in terms of uh, planning events. You know, you, you have these panic moments, but uh, from the outside, it, it was a really, really well, well done event. So kudos to the guild. Heck yeah, good job, kudos guys. to Rob and Andrew, because, uh, yeah, it went it went super, super well. Um, do you guys have, you know, not counting your own beers? Do you have a, a beer that you remember that you tried yesterday that stands out as like, ooh, that was really tasty? Mm. Something stands out. Um, I just know that uh, Debo's this year is awesome from Uncle Bear's. That's one of my favorite yearly beers that come out. Love that beer. So if you're, if you're into sours or IPAs, try one that mixes both really well. It's, it's actually a super good beer, I think. Agreed. Drew. <laughs> I don't know. I had a lot last yesterday. I didn't have to work till I had a lot of beers. Um, I actually uh, Fire and Fury, which is a new brewery that opened at yeah. um, uh, Thunderbird and stuff. Uh, they had uh, a maple stout, actually in a firkin that was pretty phenomenal. They actually sourced the a mason jar of maple syrup from a small company in Minnesota. To, and put the whole thing in the firkin, and then put coffee and uh, vanilla beans in it, which wow. was actually. A, it, it was one of the standouts. It was also 14% alcohol, so I had <laughs> a little bit and was like, I need, it's only 11 a.m. I need to, like, make it through the rest of the day. Uh, so I went back later, and it was just as delicious, but uh, I probably don't remember it as well the second time around. So, <laughs> Did anybody get to try the uh, the toasted pecan doppelbock at Saddle Mountain? Because the two times I went up, they were out of it. So I, I, I need that. to figure out, did you guys get to try that? I did not. That's that not sounds good. delightful, no, doesn't it? A standout Dr- brewery for me was Roses Under the Stairs, too. Yeah. That, they had some good stuff. Yeah. Has anyone been over to Roses Under the Stairs in downtown Phoenix yet? They're one of the newer breweries, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean. They are, yeah. Another new, another new one making very, very good beer. Yeah. If you guys have not had their beer yet, I highly recommend going by there. It's very good. Drew, did you think of one? No, I mean, <laughs> I'm, well, I could name off a few. I mean, Simple Machine had an Italian Pilsner that I really enjoyed. Um, I, I had, had a Doppelbock, yeah, but Bobby I can't remember who it was Bobby from, but it was fantastic. Um, Castellum's uh, Ciders were phenomenal. Uh, Mason Ale Works, those guys. Um, I actually tried to hit some stuff that was out of state that, would probably never go and hit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, f- I felt like uh, everybody represented really well. Uh, oh, yeah, the, uh, the cidery, Sky, Skybird? Sky? Sixbird. Sixbird. Sixbird, yeah. The, I had a couple of their ciders as well. They, they're, they're also making very good Yeah, phenomenal, right phenomenal. There's a, there's a new one that was right next to us called Below the Rim. 
Yeah. That was pretty good. So that's a metery. Yeah, uh, a metery, actually. Yeah, they're local sorry, guys. Sorry. They just opened, I think, just, just a, I mean, it must have been a month ago or so. Uh, really, really good meads. Um, but their, their tasting room or their little uh, metery is located up in Payson. Uh, they had an apple of my pie. It was an apple cinnamon mead that was mm, very, very good. Yeah. Did anybody get to try below the rim? Mead? Yep. Yeah. Mead. Good, good stuff, right? Right on. Mm. Uh, that's the green chili one. I didn't try that one. I didn't try that one. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great event uh, for sure. Any other highlights? Any Maybe some breweries that, that have opened in the last couple months or a few months that you guys want to want to shout out doing some good work? Um, personally, I've been to 100 Mile, uh, and their, f- well, their beer is great, but food's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Best fried Man. chicken sandwich I think I've ever had in my Brilliant. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. There. yeah, yeah. Valerie, if you Valerie's haven't been there, great yet, beer there yeah. you got to try it out. It's yeah. worth every, uh, whatever drive you got. Yeah. Food's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Valerie, the head brewer over there, uh, got her start at the R&D brewery for Firestone Walker. Uh, won a handful of uh, GABF medals uh, with them and is now uh, brewing some some really good stuff. I tried their German Pilsner while it was on, and uh, and I tried it, and I was like, ooh, I think Doc over at Pedal House might have some competition yeah. for the for one of the better German Pilsners in town. This is very, very good. Yeah, uh, Kitsune as well, oh, just yeah. open oh, there. Oh, yeah. They yeah, opened their spot the, yes. up there at their uh, Baba Yaga. Was, Bell and Thirty Cent. Yeah, the oof. Baba Yaga was great. They're actually, their Galactic IPA was also very yeah, good. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Tyler's Tyler's making some really great beer up there. I don't uh, know what the hazy was called, but uh, it was called Galactic. Close your eyes Galactic, and yeah. it was monkish. Yeah, yeah, yeah like straight yeah. up, it was uh, tropical. It yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, Tyler Tyler's doing great stuff up there at Katsune right now, and uh, JJ, who's his other brewer, uh, also worked at Simple Machine, so they know their stuff, which is nice. Nice. Love it. Hey, everyone, look at me. Andrew, Hi, Andrew. Photo Hi, Andrew. Great. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hear uh, a big round of applause for our three guys up here. Uh, another round of applause for the Guild and everything that they do for this community. Um, uh, I am going to plug real quick, uh, you know, Phoenix Magazine. Uh, we're very excited to, to be part of this community now. Uh, we are doing our second annual Arizona Craft Beer Awards and Festival uh, October 21st. So mark your calendars. Uh, we're going to be out at the State Farm Cardinal Stadium again this year. Really cool venue. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be a part of that. Um, and we hope you'll, you'll join us for that yeah. and way thank out you, in the and, fall. And thank you to everybody who's here. I mean, you, yeah. guys, you, you, know, you, you guys came to the festival. You had a good time. You had enough of a good time. You needed breakfast this morning, which is always great. Uh, but uh, and obviously, thank you guys for coming here. Uh, we were happy to get to host uh, the breakfast today. And yeah, let's uh, hear it for Phoenix Beer yeah. Co. again. Yeah, uh, these guys so, rock. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Rob, did you have any closing remarks? Well, let's let these guys, uh, exit. Oh, we have to leave. Rob wants yeah, to talk. Rob, Rob wants to talk. <laughs> it's Rob time. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I'm sick. I'll, I'll I'll stick around. Uh. You give me a microphone, I'll talk into it all day. Um, before you leave today, uh, you get a special gift from the guild. Uh, it is a strong beer, full color glass, uh, and Andrew is handing those out. But if if someone would be able to handle that duty, I would love to have Andrew just come up here and say a few things. So um, if someone could, Kim's on it. Kim is on it. Thanks, Kim. I, just hand out the glasses as people leave. Oh. Oh, well, okay. So, um, <laughs> I, I, again, I just wanted to say thank you uh, and to, to you to, for hosting this. It's, uh, uh, you asked about how the festival goes and if, if we're ever really satisfied. And, and this is a thing where we represent Arizona's breweries. Um, until that day and for that event, we represent you as customers. We try to make the best festival we possibly can. And, um, you know, and that is representing everybody who's able to sell beer in this market. And it's been that way for 23 years. Uh, I think we're, we're saying it's the 22nd, but um, I don't know. Did anyone go to the Saving Strong Beer Festival, the Socially Distanced Festival uh, at, at uh, Old Ellsworth when we did it during the pandemic? Yeah. 
It was one of the most creative ways to put on an event during COVID I think I had seen. It's like uh, beer speed dating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had 10 minutes Quick, with three breweries. all these beers. Yeah. I was participating as uh, the Uncle Bear's director for operations. Um, anyways, I, I loved it. I want every beer festival to be like that again. <laughs> Forever. Did, I, I, and if somebody was there, didn't it remind you of like laying up for school every morning? Like, yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone had a separate color. They had we to had be zones. in groups of 10. And, um, you know, they had their little pod area. You and, could only have 10 people in a group yeah. with COVID rules. So those 10 people would rotate and you could do 60 people an hour but you got to really talk to those customers yeah and they got to really know your brewery i loved it yeah it, it was cool it was uh it was different it was creative and it was exactly what we needed i think at the, in the moment uh you know during what was happening at the time we we, we had uh that during that time and, and andrew was on the board of directors uh before he he took this job and um so he came in knowing exactly what to do in this in this role as deputy director, and um, I know that sounds really old west, funny deputy, whatever. But to me, that means he can speak on behalf of the organization, and I have to live with his decisions just as much as he has to live with mine. So uh, I consider him uh, equal. We started uh, as homebrewers about the same time, and um, we 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 sort of graduated from the Arizona Society, Arizona Society of Homebrewers. Is anybody familiar with that group? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that, that group spawned a ton of uh, brewers. Uh, almost everybody who worked at Oso used to work at Brewers Connection, but was a Nash member. John Lane was a Nash member. And uh, Ryan, Brian, Drew. Yeah, the, the Ellsworth guys bringing it back. Uh, and uh, 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 Desert Monks, were they? They, uh, they were part of it. There's, yeah, they were part of it. I mean, it's uh, like, the breweries that opened seven and eight years ago and all the way up to like three or four years ago, everyone kind of started there. They didn't start at a bigger brewery. They didn't start at a uh, go to college and take brewing science because those classes and those programs are so few. Now there's a lot more brewing programs. We've got three at least in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. We, so we, that's great. We've got, uh, there is a uh, you can you can take a full brewery technical course at Yavapai College. You can do that. It's very uh, oh I have a job it friendly, you know, because like they do stuff in the evenings and in weekends, and they doing some remote learning. Um, you can take uh, hospitality classes with NAU. Um, they fold it into their world class hospitality uh, uh, school, and um, I, I, I I'm looking at the Ellsworth guys. Because they know, because they have a restaurant, it's it's about the beer, but it's really about hospitality. And like, uh, you know, excuse me on a Sunday. God damn, if they don't do a good job of that, like they take <sighs> care of your needs. And, and um, Uncle Bear's has that restaurant t tradition. Um, people don't know this about Hus, who's here. We didn't we didn't bring anyone up for Hus there, but uh, we should give them a shout out for their beers for sure, right? And uh, and a shout out for their new uh, Papago Brewing. Uh, you know, relaunch tap room in Mesa, uh, super cool location. Yeah, yeah, worth, yeah for worth sure. visiting and uh, bringing it back to, I believe the origins of Strong Beer Festival was in the original Papago parking lot. The back parking lot. The back parking lot, and it was put on by Ash, right? Uh, no, I mean, there's about everybody who was an Ash was there. And, yeah. And some of them, Ron Cloth, uh, Ash member, uh, lifetime Af Ash member. Um, but I wanted. Leah Huss went to uh, Culinary Institute, um, and her husband is, uh, you know, the the brewer, and he worked at uh, BJ's, which is a restaurant component. So it's it's we're in Arizona. It's all about hospitality, and um, I mean, for gosh sakes, we're at a restaurant in this beautiful location. If that on that note, thank you, Phoenix Beer Co. for hosting us. We, we thank them a lot. We look but. forward to more of your locations, and since they are a business about to reopen to the public, we should probably. Right Wind now. this up right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so again, I'm, thank I'm you. the schedule guy. Rob's the uh, philosophy I just keep guy. Until Which I is, see a red light flash. Or I just need to say this real quick. It's it's funny that you're the schedule guy because uh, I went to my first Ash homebrew day at their clubhouse uh, last year, 
and everyone shows up with these very elaborate, you know, brewing systems, homemade stuff. And then Andrew shows up about an hour and a half late. Uh, he sets up a camping stove, uh, two pots, and makes this like Frankenstein improvised MacGyver non, he didn't even boil. Like, I don't know what he did, but he's like, I'm making a beer. I don't know. He didn't measure anything. He didn't, he didn't like, he didn't take, he didn't, I don't even know if he sanitized anything. He just like, I, it was like, oh, I don't did. know what was happening. He definitely but he, did. But he made a beer. And, uh, <laughs> the bro uh, brew is the most different. incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You All right, everybody, fun. don't forget your glass. Uh, how could you possibly look at? They're just shining in the sun. They're beautiful, <laughs> full color. Uh, Andrew put that together. Um, I matched the I matched the sample glass from yesterday with the swag glass from today. That was my vision. That was yeah. my vision. So Thanks thank you very much. You're right, Andrew. We should we should go. So thank you very much. Thank you guys. So cheers, Have a good everybody. day.